Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a cool little Raspberry Pi CM4 accessory known as the Raspberry Pi Pad 5. Now this is coming to us from a company called Big Tree Tech. And basically what we have here is an awesome I.O. board for the Raspberry Pi CM4 that integrates a 5-inch IPS display. Now this is a touch display and it's actually one of the best smaller screens I've seen for the Pi so far. When it comes to the Raspberry Pi CM4, just getting the board by itself isn't going to do you much good. You will need some type of I.O. board for it or, you know, something integrated into a project. When it comes to the Raspberry Pi Pad 5, they've integrated quite a lot here for the CM4. As you can see on the back side, this is where the module will be mounted. And this will work with the CM4 Lite or the regular CM4 with eMMC storage. But we get micro SD card support here, a full-size HDMI port, three USB 2.0 ports. It also supports a real-time clock. It's got an Ethernet port and a CSI port for a camera module. So we've got a lot of stuff built into this little board. And along with all of that, it also has that 5-inch IPS display on the front side. And you can set this up to use that built-in display. You can also set it up to just use HDMI or use both as kind of an extended display with the IPS. But the main reason I really wanted to get my hands on this little board was to build a mini cyber deck. And we will take a look at that by the end. I've got V1 finished up. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the board itself and how easy it is to assemble everything. So this will work with the CM4 or the CM4 Lite. I have a 4 gigabyte Lite version here. And basically the only difference is no eMMC. Line it up. Snap it into place comes with all the hardware we need to mount this back down but I'll tell you once this CM4 is snapped in it's not going to go anywhere unless you're throwing it around like a frisbee and I'm pretty sure you don't want to do that but yeah the overall layout here looks really good adds a lot of IO to the CM4 it comes with some standoffs to kind of give you a little bit of height here on the back and over on their website you can pick up the 3d print files for a back cover and real quick, here's a layout of the board itself. So we've got those three USB 2.0 ports. It's got a micro SD card slot, full-size HDMI, CSI connector for a camera. We've got our eMMC slash SD switch, USB Type-C for powering the unit up. It does support RTC. And for the battery, it uses a CR1220, so it's a smaller battery. Ethernet port, we've got 40 GPIO pins. And there's three function buttons for the display itself. We've got our backlight up, backlight down, and a really handy button to swap the display direction. And like I mentioned, they do offer files so you can 3D print a back cover. And if you don't have access to a 3D printer to get that back plate printed up, you can always use other materials. Personally, I love this stuff called Paylight or Expanded PVC. Durable, easy to cut, waterproof, you can drill holes in it. And what I've done is just cut out a little back plate here. Just to try to kind of protect those electronics on the back when I'm messing around with it. I do wish these were shorter standoffs because it is a bit long. And with this pay light, we can go a lot closer to the board itself to make it a lot thinner. But uh, right now, we're going to use what we got in the box. And I think it turned out pretty nice. The screen is connected to the CM4 over the DSi connector. So with some operating systems, you will have to enable it from the config.txt. But some operating systems offer a switch in the settings, like Consta King's Lineage OS 12L. I'm going to be running Android 12 at first, and then we'll move over to Raspberry Pi OS. But this does work really well with Android on the CM4. And as you can see over on the side, we do get these three LED indicators to let you know what's going on. I'll be powering this with a battery pack through the video, but it does require 5 volts, 3 amps. This is plenty of power here with the pack I have. But this should boot right up into Android 12 here. And like I mentioned, it's Consta King's Lineage OS 12L. So I've had a couple days to mess around with this board, and it's definitely one of the best looking 5 inch displays I've ever used for the Raspberry Pi. We're only working with a 480 by 800 resolution, but since it's such a small form factor here, it does look a lot higher. Colors pop really nicely, and since it's an IPS, we've got great viewing angles. And as you can see, touch response on this is great, and it does have that glass screen cover instead of a plastic screen cover like some of the cheaper screens do. The first thing I thought about doing with this setup was creating a little handheld gaming console. So I just pulled out the Nacon MGX Pro. Kind of a bigger controller, but it is a telescopic controller. I've got PSP installed here with Android. 
I just paired this up to the CM4 over Bluetooth. It does work out really well. Unfortunately, there's no speaker built into the Raspberry Pi Pad 5. I kind of wish there was at least a single speaker on the backside of this, maybe just a little nano speaker. But yeah, I mean, that's definitely one thing you'd have to add to your handheld setup if you use this. Plus, we'd need to find a way to kind of get a battery set up and mounted to everything. But it really shouldn't be too hard with all of the accessories on the market, or you could do a custom build. But you could probably pick up everything for kind of a plug and play system. Next thing we're going to be testing here is Raspberry Pi OS. I've installed it to a micro SD card and there's one thing you need to do. You have to enable that DSI connection in Raspberry Pi OS. So as soon as you install it, it will be running over HDMI. You can plug this into a monitor or SSH into it. It's really up to you. But if you do want to use HDMI alone, you will have to remove that config file or you can just plug HDMI right in and use the built-in screen and HDMI at the same time. This will kind of be your second display, your HDMI will be your main display. So I've got a mouse and keyboard plugged in, but the touch also works. Uh, no setup was needed. Touch functionality with Raspberry Pi OS has gotten a lot better and it does work really well with this screen. And by the way, the sound you're hearing is not from the display, it's from a Bluetooth speaker I have connected to the CM4. You will need to enable an on-screen keyboard if you're gonna use it only as touch. So I would definitely recommend having some kind of keyboard and mouse handy. Now using Raspberry Pi OS on a smaller screen like this can be a strain on the eyes, but remember we can still plug into HDMI from that full size HDMI port. But then again, a display like this isn't great for a desktop operating system. It would be awesome for a little weather station or a home automation system if you wanted to build something like that and kind of mount it up to your wall. But yeah, I mean, it does look really good for being such a small display. Here we have YouTube running with just kind of a test video. This is Big Buck Bunny. And again, I have a Bluetooth speaker connected because we don't have any speakers on the Raspberry Pi Pad 5. But like I mentioned, the main reason I wanted to get my hands on this was to create a mini cyber deck using a CM4. So this is my version 1, totally not complete, still kind of a prototype. I don't have an internal battery just yet, but it's portable because I'm using a portable battery pack. I will have a full video coming up. I want to get a couple little things out of the way, and I'll do a little bit of a build video because putting something like this together is actually really easy. But for V1, I haven't 3D printed any parts whatsoever, not yet at least. And this is just kind of a little air mouse slash keyboard. It does use Bluetooth, or you can use the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. That's exactly what I'm using here. And with air mouse set up, uh, you can actually use it as an air mouse in Raspberry Pi OS. It's definitely a little wonky, but since we have a touch screen, this really won't be much of an issue. We can always turn this off. It's kind of like a little gyro mouse setup, and you could get used to it if you wanted to, but I'll just be using the touch screen. But yeah, as you can see, everything is working so far. Definitely a nice little portable setup. It's not foldable or anything like that. It's kind of just set up like a little cyber deck. And the next thing I really need to do is add an internal battery. I'm going to go with like a 4,000, maybe 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I think I have enough space in the back, but I'll give you a look at how I do have this set up right now. And to mount everything, I'm using that pay light. Once you heat it up, it is a bit malleable. I did swap out the longer standoffs with some plastic standoffs that I had around just to make everything a little thinner. I heated up some of that pay light and just bent it right here. Personally, I still think it looks really good like it is. It would be cool to set this up kind of like a little clamshell so it could close, but that would be much harder for anybody else to build without a 3D printer, and I really wanted to make something like this that basically anybody could build at home. Next thing I'm doing is adding that battery, and if you're interested in seeing more on this mini cyber deck, definitely stay tuned to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But yeah, when it comes to the Raspberry Pi Pad 5 from Big Tree Tech, I think it's an awesome little I.O. board with that IPS display attached for a CM4, and you can definitely build some cool stuff. If you're interested in learning more or maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a link in the description, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye out on the channel for the mini Cyberdeck build. That'll be coming up in the next week or so. I'm still waiting on a couple little parts to come in. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.